Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. We started chapter 2, right? That is Physiographic Divisions of India. And in last two videos, we completed Himalayas. So now in this video, we are going to see about Great Plains of India. And this Great Plains of India is important from your both mains and prelims. So earlier you got questions in your UPSC prelims regarding this Great Plains and even in your mains also. So please don't neglect this topic. So first of all, this Great Plains of India, they are also called as Northern Plains. They are also called as Northern Plains. So this is the first important thing you have to know. So please don't confuse with this word Great Plains and as less Northern Plains. So actually these Northern Plains or Great Plains are also called as indo gangetic Plains. And it is a very huge geographical area. So here the interesting thing is you have to see how these Great Plains of India they were formed. So this Northern Plains they have formed by interplay of three major rivers or we can say three major river systems. So as you know those three are Himalayan rivers. First one is river Indus, second one is river Ganga and next one is river Brahmaputra. And if you see the one more thing that is these are alluvial fertile plains. So these are the plains which are mainly formed because of deposition process. So the rivers like river Indus, river Ganga and river Brahmaputra along with their tributaries they mainly brought the sediments and these sediments had been deposited. So here this alluvial fertile plains they are mainly formed by the deposition process. So this is very important thing and if you see these plains they mainly spread over 7 lakh square kilometers. 7 lakh square kilometers and the plain it is about 2400 kilometer long and the broadness it is about 240 to 320 kilometers broad. And this, if you are talking about the different physiographic divisions like Himalayas, plains, desert, coastal areas and as well as islands, peninsular India. So in these great plains we can see it is densely populated. So you can get a question like so which of the following are densely populated. So densely populated region that is seen in this great plains. And this great plains which have a rich soil cover and even they combined with adequate water supply and we are also having favorite climate. So because of this, this area it is agriculturally very productive. So it is agriculturally very productive region in our country. And if you are talking about one more important thing like exact location of this great plains. So in Himalayas we discussed about this HEFF that is Himalayan frontal fault. So this great plains they are mainly located south towards the Sivalex and they mainly separated by Himalayan frontal fault. So this is about the introduction regarding the Great Plains. So if you are talking about physiographic division of Great Plains, so these Great Plains are divided into five important parts. And this physiographic division is very important and you can get a questions like prelims based questions from this topic. So those physiographic divisions of Great Plains are the first one is Babar Plains, second one is Terai Tract, third one is Bangar, Fourth one is Kadar and fifth one is Delta Plains. So you have to remember in the order Babar, Terai, Bangar, Kadar and Delta. So now let us see some important facts where you can get the questions in the form of statements in prelims. So first one is Babar. So here this Babar which is seen south of Sivalex 
and they mainly spread from Jammu and Kashmir to Assam. And if you are talking about width of this bubble in the west, it is more compared to that of width in the eastern region. And especially in this bubble plains, we can see the deposition of gravels and sediment deposits. That means whenever the river it is flowing in this direction, for example, so whenever it is, uh, it is carrying some sediments, so in the sediments we will be having irregular size, correct? Some sediments are big in size, some sediments are small in size. So here, whenever river it is flowing, so it is having less carrying capacity of this bigger boulders or bigger sediments. So this bigger sediments, they will be sedimented first and the lighter sediments, they will be carried to the large distances compared to this bigger sediments. So in this Baba plains, so gravels and sediments, they will be deposited. Okay, and because of this large size of boulders, gravels, so this area which is not suitable for cultivation. So this is about this Baba plains. And next one it is about Terai region. So to the south, here we have Babar, and to the south of this Babar, we have this Terai region. And this is a marshy tract and width it is more in the eastern region because as I said, so these are the lighter sediment particles, they will be carried to a large distances compared to that of large boulders. And in this terrai region, we can experience high rainfall. So because of high rainfall, we can see excessive humidity and because of good rainfall and good uh, soil, which is rich in humus and organic matter. So in this area, we can see there are thick forest. And whenever there is thick forest, means automatically we can see good flora and fauna. And this area, it is very much good for cultivation. So especially we will be going for cultivation of wheat, rice, maize, sugar cane, etc. in this terrain region. And third important division here is Bangar Plains. So Bangar means nothing but they are older alluvial plains. So this is very important fact. And they represent the upland alluvial tracts. And they are also well drained and they are very much suitable for cultivation. So this Bangar soils or Bangar Plains, they are very much rich in humus. So because of rich in humus, yes, it will be helpful for getting higher yield. And it is also very much famous for presence of calcium carbonate nodules. So those calcium carbonate nodules are called as conkers. So this is very important from Prelims point. So where can you see these conkers? So conkers are seen in this Bangar plains. They are older alluvial plains. And fourth division is the Kadar Plains. The Kadar Plains, they are new alluvial deposits. So older alluvial deposits are Bangar. And now newer alluvial deposits, they are called as Kadar. And this Kadar Plains, they mainly contains fresh deposit of silt. And they will be having fresh deposits of mud, clay and sand. And because of this newer deposits of alluvial, then it is also very much famous for cultivation. So we can go for cultivation of sugar cane, rice, wheat, maize and oil seeds in this Kadar Plains. And last type of physiographic division is Delta Plains. So in this Delta Plains, they are nothing but the extension of this Kadar lands. So it is one of the depositional feature. It is mainly seen in the lower reaches of river Ganga. And we can see older mud, newer mud, marshy areas, charts, bills, they are seen in this delta plains. And this delta it is the most fertile and we can go for cultivation of paddy, tea and jute in this delta plains. So here you have to see the diagram also, right? So this is Himalayas. So from these Himalayas, these river system, they arised and they are bringing some sediments and the bigger boulders, they will be settled first. That is called as Bangar 
and next small small particles they will be settled so it is a terrai region and older alluvial deposits are seen here on the both the sides it is bangar and new deposits are called as khadar okay so this is the diagram that you need to draw whenever you are writing answer regarding this physiological divisions and now let us see the regional divisions so based on the location of this plains so region wise we divide this northern plains into four types so first here you can see we have rajasthan plains next one is punjab plains and next one is ganga plains and last one is brahmaputra plains so based on the location of region so this plains are divided into four types so first one is rajasthan plains second one is punjab plains and third one is ganga plains and last one is brahmaputra plains so it is very easy to remember also so from west to you east you have to remember and from east to west also you have to remember so this might be your prelims based question so now let us see the rajasthan plains so this rajasthan plains are mainly seen in this marustali it is also called as rajasthan bagar region and actually most of this rajasthan plains they were under marine submergence and later on during this himalayan up, up, upheaval or upliftment of himalayas during tertiary period so during this tertiary period himalayas upliftment happened and during this period so whatever the marine submergence was present so it has been receded and this rajasthan plains are very much uh, important for the brackish water lakes for example we have a brackish water lake called as sambar and we can also see there is river luni which mainly helpful for inland drainage in rajasthan and this rajasthan plains are also very much famous for the sand and as well as sand dunes and we can see bagar soils they are semi arid and fertile region because they are mainly drained by river luni so these are the some important things that you have to remember and next one is punjab plains it is also called as punjab haryana plains so actually where this uh, punjab haryana plain is located so it is located in this region right so here we can see this punjab haryana plains and these plains which mainly forms a western part of the northern plain so it is mainly forming western western part of our northern plain so these are the plains which mainly formed by the deposition of rivers like river satluj bias ravi as it mainly as i can say that they are formed by river indus and tributaries of indus and actually in this area which is very much famous for the doabs doab means for example this is one river and this is one river so the area between the two rivers is called as doabs so punjab haryana plains are very much famous for doabs so doabs are nothing but a region or the land which is lying between two rivers and if you see those uh, doabs we are having like five doabs so i will be writing so if you want you can make a note so first doab here is sindh sagar first one is sindh sagar doab it is between rivers indus and jhela so sindh sagar doab it is between river indus and jhelum and next one is j e c h jach doab so this jach doab which is present between rivers jhelum and chenab and third one is rechna r e c h n a so this rechna do uh, it is between chenab and river ravi and fourth one is bari ro uh, so this bari do uh, which is present between river ravi and as well as bias 
and fifth one is best best it is between bias and satluj so these are the two ups that are mainly seen in this punjab haryana plain and actually now one important problem faced by this punjab haryana plain is northern part of the region which is mainly undergoing intense erosion so because of this it is creating chaos it is mainly linked to the formation of coast and next one is ganga plains so these are the ganga plains which mainly lies between river emuna emuna in the west to bangladesh border in the east so here in the east we have bangladesh and in the west we have this yamuna river and lower ganga plain which mainly formed by the down wrapping of the part of peninsular india okay and especially we can see main topographical variations for example babar is seen terai region is seen bangar is seen khadar is seen leaves and courses of rivers all of these divisions are seen in this ganga plain so because of this this is very important and in which states we can see this ganga plains so in states for example in haryana some parts of haryana delhi up bihar some parts of jharkhand and west bengal so in all these areas we can see this ganga plains and actually this ganga plains are also divided into upper gangetic plain middle gangetic plain and as well as lower gangetic plains and next one is brahmaputra plains so here we can see numerous riverine island or seen here in this brahmaputra plains and one important here is mazuli island mazuli island it is one of the important island and actually this brahmaputra plains which mainly surrounded by high mountains on all the sides okay so this is about the important regional divisions regional divisions of plains and now let us see what is the importance of this plains so why you need to know about this plains so what are the services which are provided by this plains you have to know this so actually this plains are the one of the land forms they are having a very great importance especially in this agriculture sector so especially in this agriculture sector they has a lot of importance because whatever the sediments they are mainly brought up by the rivers so they are forming this plain land forms and because of this alluvial deposits are mainly made by the rivers they are very much fertile in nature so they have good fertility and because of this they will be having good crop growth and they will be having high productivity also and even they provide to grasslands so in this grasslands we can go for growing of uh, uh, grass etc and we can go for grazing of our livestock and especially we need fertile lands if you want to go for mechanization of our agriculture so this mechanization of agriculture is seen in use so whenever we are going for mechanization then we can improve the agriculture productivity so to improve our agriculture productivity yes mechanization is important so mechanization can be facilitated in this plains and next one is if you are talking about the population settlements so actually population it is concentrated in plains so this is because towns are easily laid out on approximately flat land form on the plains and the land forms they could be of great economic importance because these land forms they will be having the flowing of different rivers and because of this we can go for good irrigation facilities on farm lands 
So, because of this, yes, population will be high and even people, they will be wishing to come up with the settlements in these plains. And next one is irrigation. So, here this plain land forms, they will be having alluvial deposits. So, because of this, they will attract good settlements and population con concentration also. And even actually if you see they are also excellent for the irrigation we can provide the proper irrigation facilities and not only that this plain land forms they are very much excellent or good for sporting activities because they will provide leveled ground. They will provide leveled ground for sports and also for some recreational activities. And planes they will provide communication routes. For example, you can talk about railways. So, we can construct railways easily and we can go for constructing of roads and as well as airports. And next one is planes are the good source of mineral resources. For example, we have coal, tin, manganese, iron petroleum etc okay so this is about the importance of the plains so if this is about in detail regarding the great plains of india or the northern plains of india so i discussed each and every dimension from prelims and mains point of view so if you want to get the pdf of this class you can get this class pdf in telegram channel and that channel link is given in description box so join the telegram channel for the pdf so by this i'm concluding thank you so much and don't forget to subscribe to rathor science academy and try to share this video to your friends and if you really like the video so please click the like button so thank you so much